Good morning. It is very cold today. We have quite a strong northwesterly blowing and it's taking all the heat out of the house. I think it's 13 degrees in the kitchen Celsius, which I think is 56 Fahrenheit. And it's around 16 in the living room, which is going to be, what, 62? And that's with the radiators on and the extra stove running in the living room. It's quite cold. Most of the apples are blowing off the trees. Um, so I've been out to collect quite a few already. And uh, John's had to tie up one of the cooking apple trees um, to some support at the back because it was lifting the base. The, the root ball was starting to lift out of the ground at the back because of the way the wind's blowing over the top of the workshop roof. Because they're small trees but they have quite large canopies on this year. Um, probably because I put a lot of fresh homemade um, compost on them last year. So we've had a good crop of apples and they put on some growth but um, because they've got that extra height they're now above that level where the wind's catching them all the time. So I've actually come upstairs to do some sewing but not on my dress or not at the moment anyway I've come up to make something a little bit different or two things I'm going to attempt to make I want to make a little like a tunic for one of our elderly hens she's oh uh, well we have the two of our well we have two oldest chickens at the same age if that makes sense. so we've got like um, one hen and one cockerel I think they're around eight years old now. Um, I would have to check back to be doubly sure. Um, but she hasn't got many feathers on at the moment <laughs> and she's quite cold. She seems to be feeling the cold. John says she keeps um, sleeping in the nest boxes and things like that. So I'm going to make her a little tunic. I have made saddles for the hens before when we had um, more hens and more young cockerels. And some of the hens were getting... Um, their feathers and their shoulders, in, uh, not injured, but roughed up quite a bit by the cockerels. So I did make um, saddles for the hens at the time, which are kind of like two layers of fabric with a bit of batting in between. And it's just like a, it's, all, it's like a slightly shaped rectangle really pad. And they have elastic straps on that go underneath their wings, just to give them protection on their backs. But what I want to make for this hen is like a little tabard. So like it's got like a front and a back and you put over the head and then it'll have little Velcro tabs on the sides. Um, I found a pattern online this morning and I think it's one that you would use for like rescue battery hens while their feathers are growing back in. So I'm going to make one of those and it's basically just like an, like an hourglass shaped piece of fleece fabric with a hole in the middle for the head and it says velcro tabs on them so i need to dig out some scraps of fleece fabric i know i've got some somewhere i suspect it's in one of my big trugs full of fabric because i couldn't find it in one of the bags downstairs in the catch-all cupboard so i'm going to look for that and also um one of our we have two cats Holly is this big, fluffy, long-haired um, black cat, and she's got some rag doll in her, so she's a big furball. Um, but Willow, which is actually her sibling, they are actually we were born at the same time. Um, she's this tiny little petite cat that doesn't look much bigger than a like a six-month-old kitten. She's never, she's always been this tiny little petite cat, um, and she's got really short, super short. Um, fur quite dense in places it reminds me when you look in certain places of like a chinchilla fur it's quite you know short but soft but slightly denser but she gets she feels the cold a lot who thing so at the moment she keeps sitting on top of the like sprawling across the top of the radiators and things like that and in the summer she loves being in the greenhouse where it's lovely and hot she loves the heat which hates the cold she hates the wind so I did look on Ravelry for patterns for like a little sweatery type thing for her but I don't know if she'd wear one. I did find one that was called an anxiety wrap for cats which is basically a garter stitch rectangle of knitting and it has two little slots in for their front legs so you pop them 
their little legs in and the sides come up and then it has buttons and buttonholes on the ends and then you just fasten them so it's just like a little a little wrap with little leg holes in um but what i'm going to do is if i'm going to be making a hen tabard i thought i will make a prototype one of these little wraps um for willow to see if she'd actually wear something because i'm not convinced she will um she's quite uh she can be quite skittish she's not she's really affectionate and she'll like sleep on you and stuff like that but she doesn't like to be picked up particularly she'll suffer it for a little bit but she's not keen and um she generally doesn't like you know if you if you put her like a something on top of it to keep her warm she won't stay long before she wants to be out and she'll sit on top of it so I'm not convinced she would wear something but I thought a prototype one minute of just a scrap of fleece I can at least get an idea and if it works out then I can think of something a little bit more um I don't know something that would fit her a little bit better so that's the plan for this morning I just have to find some fleece fabric first I know I've got some scraps there's some like a dusky dark blue and there's some brown and there's some beige scraps reasonable sized pieces somewhere I just have to find them first okay I found the fleecy bits so I have I have some of this blue which is a little bit thicker it's kind of fluffy on one side and I don't know if it's going to focus but it's kind of smooth and woven on the other side that sort of kind of fleecy stuff and then I have some brown which is not smooth on either it's kind of smoother on one side but it's still fluffy and I have a small piece of that as well but I also have this kind of beigey colour very lightweight fleece I'm thinking of using this for Willow's little wrap I think with it being thinner there's more chance of her um, been okay with it so I just need to you know turf her out of wherever she's hold herself up I think she's on top of the wardrobe in the bedroom because it gets warmer up there um, to take some measurements and this is quite stretchy as well um, so it's knowing how big to make it and I think I will put velcro on this to fasten it on rather than buttons because it is a, a prototype and we'll see how she goes and um, see if she'll put up with it because I think it'll help just for in the house I don't know I don't know maybe it should be okay with a velcro a little, a little velcro jacket outside um, we shall see because at the moment she doesn't really want to go outside even when she wants to go to the toilet um, so you kind of make her go out, which is mean. But she does go out and then she'll come straight back in. So maybe she'll be okay. So I'm going to uh, sketch out um, the dimensions I need for the chicken tabard. So I don't have to keep referring to my phone. And I can sketch that, sketch that onto a piece of paper. And then I will go downstairs to the tape measure and measure up the cat. So I've done a couple of rough sketches of what I need to make. This is for the chicken tabard. So you have to imagine that that's the underneath and that's the top that goes over the head and down the back. So like I said, it's kind of an hourglass shape with a hole for the head to go through. And I've sketched out the dimensions that I saw on the internet. For Willow's little wrap, um, I've just been down and measured her. I haven't took into account um, the extra length I need to add on on either end for the velcro. These are just kind of her measurements. So I'm going to cut out the pieces of fabric next or I'll probably use these some scrap pieces of paper for patterns and then cut out some fabric next and um, get these run up as quickly as possible. So I've been down and tested the template on Willow decided it needs to be slightly narrower so I've just narrowed it a little bit in the centre there by putting a little fold in it um, the leg holes are not a bad size it needed tapering here otherwise it would have been wrapping over the top of her head and it needs a couple more inches in width um, which way are we going? here I'm not sure if that's just because it's made of paper not fabric 
so I will make it a couple of inches bigger to take into account the size, much, how much bigger it seemed to need on the paper plus um, room for the velcro to go in afterwards and I think I'll give it a little bit extra length as well, maybe an extra inch, maybe two, I can always cut it down afterwards. So I'll cut out the fabric and I will test it on her again and then decide if it needs any more adjustments after that. Okay, so I just checked, tested this on her. Turns out I shouldn't really have took the corners off after all. It was just the way it fit when I tried it with the paper template. So I'm just trying to decide if I should put, if I just cut another one out with those top bits on. Size wise, it fits really well. I think it needs um, maybe another half an inch, um, but it would fit as it is because there's quite a lot of stretch in this anyway. It's quite, it's quite stretchy. So I think I'll cut a second one out, and then I'm going to attach the Velcro to it, and then we can try it on it and see if she'll keep it on. So before I start sewing Velcro on the kitty wrap i'm also going to cut out the pieces for the chicken tabard as well so that i can sew the velcro at the same time i've cut out a template and i'm going to cut this on the fold um so i'm just trying to get my fabric ready i decided to go with the heavier um brown and i'm trying to get it lined up as best as I can. I like to use as little fabric as possible for anything so I'm just uh, trying to, I like to eke it out as much as possible so if I ever need a bit of fabric for something else I might have just the right size. I don't want to cut tons of fabric up and then find next time I want to use it for something I'm like half an inch short so I'm just getting this ready. I might need to get a black pen to mark this out unless I just freehand it I could just freehand it I might do that rather than trying to draw onto thick fleecy fabric because I can't find my white tailor's chalk I can find my blue but I don't think that'll short very well on this either so, so that's one side this might be tricky but at least it doesn't have to be perfect okay I'll turn around make sure everything's still lined up So now I've just got to cut out the neck hole and then I'll find my velcro and get it sewn onto both these little projects and then see if they work. Catching the chicken might be easier than catching the cat because it's so, I don't know if you can hear the wind, that rumbling in the background, because this room would have been an attic room obviously you can hear the sounds but it's also that's north and that's west and the wind's coming straight on this room so it's a little bit rumbly up here today it, it it's not as bad as in the kitchen um because the kitchen we have like a vaulted ceiling um the sound tends to echo through and the tiles rattle um in the kitchen whereas they don't in this older part of the cottage they don't rattle um, so there we have the little tabard with a little neck hole so I've just got to get some velcro oh, I've got a little notch missing out of that but that doesn't matter um, find some velcro I think it's in the box up there and get these stitched up and um, check they fit
probably need a few adjustments and I'm not entirely sure she's convinced it's a good idea. <laughs> um, she keeps trying to back up to try and get out of it, I think. So I think we need to make some changes, but it's a start and maybe she'll be okay if she's just laid down in it. The overhead light in here is really bright and I'm looking even more bedraggled than at normal after all the salt in the wind outside and an hour spent dancing around on the VR headset earlier and I've realised that I should wear this more often. I've been swapping jumpers around all day, it's either been too hot or too cold but it's basically been two jumpers of some description most of the day but I find it quite claustrophobic having several layers on my arms but I knit this like slip over, pull over, uh, tank top, vest thing, whatever you want to call it. I think last year, maybe the year before, and I keep remembering I need to knit more of them because they are brilliant, because they keep you warm without bulking out your arms. Anyway, I just wanted to do a quick update on how we're getting on with the Let's Boogie sweater before I sign off for the day. So, <clears throat> I have decided to do I cord bind offs on the sleeves and I'm really happy I have. I did one sleeve with a short 2x2 two two rib and I didn't like the look of it so I thought well, what else could I do? So I did an I cord bind off on the other one, decided that's the one for me. So I ripped out the other cuff and redid it so I now have two I cord bind off sleeves and I really like it. In some ways I am very tempted to rip out the neckline, the collar and do an I-cord bind off there as well. Do you know what, I don't know why I bother knitting the rib on a top-down sweater because nine times out of ten I end up ripping it out and it's a pain in the butt to rip out a top-down sweater neckline because you, it's in the wrong direction. So maybe I should start doing provisional cast-ons. So I've got that far, both sleeves are done. I'm working on the bottom rib, we're in the home stretch now. I have done uh, about an inch and a half of rib on the bottom of the sweater and again I'm tempted at the bottom of the rib to do an eye cord bind off. That's what I have on this cardigan, on the bubble cardigan here. This one has rib all around the front and the rib on the bottom and it's all bound off with an eye cord bind off. And it looks fine. It, it's flaring out because I'm pulling it, but it doesn't. It kind of sits nice and straight, which I really rather like. I usually do a stretchy bind off on rib. Well, I do a stretchy bind off on everything, but I usually do a stretchy bind off on the rib, but I'm never keen on the look of rib. And I don't know, I just, I just, I quite like the eye cord bind off. So, like I said, I'm very tempted to do the same with the top neckline and rip out all the rib on that and just make it look like the sleeves look because I think it looks quite cute. It looks, just looks nice on. It looks cute. So, tempted. I'm not sure. But we're getting close to the end of the rib. I would say another evening's worth of knitting on it and it'll be ready for binding off, if not bound off. I don't know. This cable that it's on is too short to try it on so I'll have to knit another I don't know a few more rows anyway and then slip some of the stitches onto another cable so that I can try the sweater on and decide just how long I want the ca the cable the rib to be it's been a long day but it's looking really nice I'm really happy with it we're getting close so all being well We'll be finished this before Halloween. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there and pick this back up again. Oh no, I've got to pick this back up again um, tomorrow and uh, settle in. Okay, bye bye.